So as you can see, plug in uh, the uh, unit is fairly straightforward. Just goes into your OBD port there. That uh, you'll find below your steering wheel and above your pedals. So you have the device plugged in with the cable to your OBD2 uh, port. Start the car up, you can have it running or just on full ignition. And straight away, we'll go through the menu here on the VT600 unit. So you have your OBD2 uh, quick scan. So it's going to check the protocol, find the protocol. And at the same, off, so no DTC lights. Click OK, it'll take you to the two, uh, two units that are quickly scanned. So you've got your transmission control module and your engine control module. If we click into those, it'll give us a bit more information. So again, you can check codes. Pending codes, store codes, permanent codes. Now raise the codes. View live data. Now this is going to scan through and check all the options there is for data, and then you'll be able to view it. So you can again see the complete list. Just going to show you a whole lot of data. So it's normally best to go into a custom list and choose the data you uh, want. And on the side here, you can see down the bottom, you've got select all, clear all, and view data. So those three things relate to the F1, F2, and F3 button. So F3 is going to be view data. And you can see right now that we've got both those up. And then we've got the middle button to do one graphic, two graphics. So you can graph like both your data uh, points and merge that graph. So if you keep it if you want if you're trying to compare something and to see what the uh, problem is, you can uh, use that as a technique. Escape out of that, exit that, yes, I'm sure, and it goes back to the main menu. So that's the quick scan mode. Next, if you go into the ABS SRS, so ABS brakes and your airbags, click OK, you'll be able to go through all the car modules until you find what you're after. This is going to allow you to scan every single module of the car. So, you can go to automatic selection first, see if it finds it. Sometimes it will, sometimes it won't. If it doesn't find it, go back and go to our manual selection and you'll just have to choose the year, etc. So it's picked up a Land Cruiser Prado, which is correct. That's all correct, so again, uh, the OK is down in the F3 position. And choose the year that it is. So you can see obviously there's some changes here because the 6th month 2012 to the 10th month 2011. So click OK. With Smart Key, without Smart Key. Just ask in options and check all those are correct. And then F3 again for OK. Now you come into it here. So you can choose a control unit or you can go to like auto scan. So auto scan is going to take a bit of time because it's going to check every single control unit in the car. As you can see here, like engine, pass, no fault. ECT pass, no fault, cruise control is by picking up a fault. 
Maybe he is, he's picking up a throw. You'll see sometimes it will scan a unit. It's like this one here, most likely. Yeah, you see, and the PM1 gateway didn't appear and it just disappeared. So when this happens, it's checking if that like, module exists on the car, and if it doesn't, it won't show it. It's just because obviously uh, Toyota Prados all around the world are a little bit different. So depending which, what uh, this one has. So driver's door motor like module you can see. Combination meter. So 84% tells you up top left how long it has to go. So if I just went control module before this one, instead of going to auto scan, I could have just selected the module I was after instead of putting them all up. Which would have been a bit quicker. So that's it. That's everything. So straight away we can go cruise control. So it's going to take us into the cruise control module. Read code. So it was picking up a code for it. It's no longer picking up a code, so sometimes there is codes in the system that will pick up quickly and then they will disappear. Live data, exactly the same as before. It will view the data you can see from the cruise control module. All that sort of stuff. The ABS, which had also shown a fault for us, so we should fix that one here. Okay, so it's given us that fault there, which is most likely because we have electric brakes uh, hooked up on this car. So once you get a code like that, you've got the so you have the code and, and like the definition. Best thing to do is just to put it into Google of your year and model of car, because eighty percent of the time it's going to be a common problem. So we've also got a few extra things in this um, module, we've got our, our, we have active tests. So this allows you like to activate certain things in the vehicle. And so now we're in here. So these are the things you can activate. So if we go ABS warning light, Tells you what it's going to do, F1's OK, all data, and it's got the ABS warning light coming up here. So, what I will do is put this down. So now if I hit the on on it, you can see our ABS light comes on and off, on and off. So active tests with scan tools just allow you to check out uh, like certain things if you want to activate them to diagnose issues you're having. And again, you can just escape out of this. Obviously, it's going to be all the things you can turn off, start the ABS, like solenoids, etc. Special functions. Now, all of these are going to change depending on the vehicle you have. So here for the ABS, you've got your, obviously, your bleeding of your brakes in your test mode and reset memory. All functions you need to do when dealing with your brakes. So it's a great tool, it's fairly straightforward to use in here. You've got your uh, so it, it, it tells you, uh, it does talk you through 
what everything is. So battery matching, you'd have to choose what type of car you have and go through. So when you add a new battery to your car, a lot of modern cars you have to match that battery to <laughs> let the ECU know that it's a new battery so it doesn't try and charge it like it's an old battery. You got your oil reset, so that's basically your service reset on a lot of models of cars. Electric parking brake, so if you're changing your pads, you need to better like release these. The throttle position sensor, adjust your airflow, air fuel, sorry. Your DPF, so that's your a manual regeneration of your DPF a little time, or if putting in a new unit, you need to reset it. Injectors, coding your injectors your airbag reset, mobiliser, so that's the chip in your key that allows it to start, your gear learn, your sunroof, odometer, TPS, ABS bleed, gearbox suspension. So a lot of these like functions as you can see before when I went into the actual um, module and went to like special function on this type of vehicle you're in, that's where you'll be able to see it as well. Or to get to it quicker you can just go straight in through here now it's best to always check the coverage of your car so you can check it on our website just have a look at that list um, it'll have the year of car and all the modules that can be accessed and what can be done um, so you have two things really you have a scan and diagnose so that's if you can scan uh, scan like the modules check live data do like active tests and clear and clear and clear faults so that's like part of a full full system scan tool and then you get your special function so that's everything to do with say injector coding a, a dpf manual regeneration etc etc also have a playback function if you record data and you want to view it